from the Clark Ford Studio in Oxford, Mississippi, MBW Digital proudly presents the Oxford Exxon Podcast. I'd say thanks for tuning in, but why am I going to give you a round of applause for something you're supposed to do, to be frank? And now, here are your hosts, Chase Parm. And broadcast school has really paid off. And Neil McCrady. I deserve to be on TV. Tuesday edition of the Oxford Exxon Podcast, Chase Parnell Neil McCrady, Clark Ford Studio this morning, Ole Miss playing a matinee today, baseball hosting North Alabama, UNA at 11 a.m. this morning at Swayze Field, it is the annual Kids Day game, all kids in attendance are getting uh, some sort of book, I'll look and see what that, uh, that, that book is, but nonetheless, a lot of kids in today, we'll have a lot of uh, kids songs, will be a lot of worries about foul balls, it will be very loud, um, a lot going on this morning at uh, at Swayze Field around 11 o'clock. Max Chofi on the mound for the Rebels getting the uh, the start. His first start this season. Maybe his first career start. I'm honestly not sure. But we'll look and see. It doesn't really matter. So, uh, podcast uh, brought to you every single day by the Oxford Exxon Highway 6 West in Oxford. And you know Critical and the Oxford Exxon is hosting the or sponsoring the uh, FCA Breakfast at Ole Miss at the Manning Center April 27th. It is uh, that morning. It is going to feature the Kessinger family as the uh, the special guest. You can get tickets. You can find out more at OleMissFCA.com for uh, that one. You can do a lot of breakfast type things, Neil, that weekend. You can you can go to the FCA breakfast on Saturday. You can hear all that. I went last year. Really, really well done event. The next day, you can head on over to the Lyric with the Blue Delta thing. I mean, we can take care of all your double decker breakfast options this uh, that that weekend coming up. Yeah, that's true. That's that. Uh, that is true. If you're a big breakfast person, we're 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 your we're your go-to site. We're from coming from the Clark Ford studio. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh yeah, we are Clark Ford, uh, Amory, Mississippi, six six two two five seven, nineteen hundred six six two two five seven nineteen hundred. Call the number. Ask for Corey Clark. <laughs> ask for Corey Clark. Tell Corey what new Ford you're looking for. Um, get a quote. Listen, if you think you're in the market for a vehicle, you're not sure whether you want to go forward or not, it's good. It's cool. Uh, do yourself a favor. Do us a favor. Call Corey and at least get a quote. Get started. Uh, one of two things is going to happen. It's going to either give you a really good baseline moving forward, or it's going to pique your interest enough that you might end up doing what I've done uh, three times now, and that's go back to Clark Ford. Uh, it's easy. It's right to the bottom line. You know you're getting a fair uh, solid deal without all the hassle, without all the haggle. So, uh, and then even better, tell Corey at the end of your deal that you heard about Clark Ford on the podcast, and you'll save five hundred dollars off your already great bottom line. Six six two two five seven nineteen hundred. I'm having one of those mornings where Jeffrey, if he was still around, would be throwing something at me because I realized I was just like slurping through a straw right into the microphone, not even realizing it. I'm, I don't know, just a little aloof this morning for whatever reason. Um. All right, so uh, Sean Robinson, you know, start Jeffrey there. Was, Jeffrey was always very critical of your mic presence. Jeffrey's critical of everything that I do for uh, the most part. So you you have a tendency, like sometimes during the other ads, you you'll yawn. Oh, really? Yeah, you you'll yawn in, oh. kind of into the mic. It's kind of your fault, isn't it? If you weren't a little less boring with the advertisements, then maybe I, you know I would stay a little more engaged. I'm not arguing. I've I've been accused of being a very boring person. So there you go. You kind of like boring. Uh, not really. I just keep a very low profile here. I'm, I, I, when I go other places, I'm, I'm, I'm a kind of a different person. Well, that makes no sense. Yeah, it does. Does it? It really does. I, you and I've had totally different experiences here in the last 10 years. People <laughs> like you because they view you as an Ole Miss guy. That's reality. We could, well, there's no point in debating the psych, the psychology of it. I mean, I could, I could point out people who will talk to you who don't talk to me, and it's based on nothing but that. And it's perfectly fine. I'm just saying that's that's that. There's a lot of reality to that. You and I have a different Oxford experience, uh, completely. I, I love Oxford. Oxford's great. I, before anybody thinks I'm insulting it, it's an absolutely wonderful place to raise kids. Uh, I would, I would. Uh, I would do it again a thousand times over. It's a wonderful school system. Um, our kids have had a fantastic experience. They've gotten great education. So I'm not I'm not knocking it at all. But but I keep a I keep a pretty. Let, let, let me re, let, let me let me let me rephrase. Your situation here has never been better. Is that uh, fair? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. No question about it. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't change much of anything. Light years from 2010, 2013, 2015. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, when I first got here, so much, so much damage had been done. Um, with uh, with nut and all of that. That, and, uh, and, and frankly, just your reputation because you were a columnist, and that's a very understood thing in a lot of places. Yeah, I was a columnist, and uh, in the years that I was a columnist, Ole Miss was really bad at football. I mean, that's reality. I was a columnist covering the SEC in the years that Ed Orgeron was the coach at, at Ole Miss. And if anybody would like to argue that Ole Miss was good at football during those years, I'm, I'm all ears. Um, they weren't. And at the time, they were sort of the joke of the league, if, you were, if we're being completely honest. Um, they weren't drawing. They, they, uh, they, they were, got a lot of criticism for firing Cutcliffe and saying, hey, we're going to go out and hire an established head coach, and then you hire Ed Orgeron. Um, the, the program was – the football program was, was the laughing stock of the league. I wrote – I can remember writing nice things about the baseball program at the time, and I can remember writing uh, pretty complimentary things about the basketball program at the time, but football's the, the king. And I had been critical of uh, of Ole Miss. And um, so, yeah, I, I walked in, and then, you know, the, the, the media game that, that still gets played here, it just, it's been negated now by years of work. But the media game really got played at that point. And so, uh Covering Houston Nutstaff was difficult. Um, there's no question about that. From day one, it was difficult. So uh, that that certainly uh, that certainly cloud, made made doing my job more difficult than I had anticipated. And you were coming off the deal where you probably would have really liked Alabama to have won the Iron Bowl occasionally, because I mean all that went down basically because Bama sucked at football. There's no question about it. Yeah, there's no doubt. Um, I, I, I mean, I could we could write tell these stories forever yeah I mean, we're not but. In, no we're not in a nutshell yeah ah. I, I mean i can remember i can remember driving to iron bowl games and talking to myself out loud basically praying to the football gods please let alabama win one of these just give me an upset but at that time alabama was a dumpster fire and auburn was running a really good program they were getting good players and Tommy had them going, and they were a consistent, if you go back and look at it, you know, they were a consistent 9-10 to 10 win type of team. And uh, and they they spiked that one year that they, what year was that? It was 04. 04. Uh, that they, they went undefeated and, and probably should have had an opportunity to play for a national title, but they went undefeated and they won the Sugar Bowl, and they were recruiting at a really high level. And... Um, it was what it was. I mean, you know, I've told people when, you, when you're doing daily radio and one program's 13-0 and winning the Sugar Bowl and, and, and the conversation is about whether they should or shouldn't have an opportunity to play for the national title, and they probably should have, and that's what I was saying. And then the other program is, I don't even know what they were in, in 04. I mean, it was, they had a football coach who uh, wanted to leave, I think he left, Franchoni wanted to leave for Kansas and then did leave for for uh, for Texas A and M, and then they had the whole Mike Price debacle and then Shula came in and uh, Shula was kind of boring and Tommy was was not boring at all and um, yeah so it was what it was um, but yeah I mean cer- certainly my my career as crazy as this sounds my career is completely different. If Nick Saban had come to to Alabama two or three years earlier and prevented the the, I mean I say this all the time. I did six years of daily radio in Alabama. What are the odds that the six years that I do daily every afternoon radio in Alabama, Auburn goes six and zero in the Iron Bowl? <laughs> I mean, what are they? I mean, the odds on that are just they're just astronomical. To to. Kind of move this back toward Ole Miss and just kind of a general discussion because I don't have any idea why I started here today. But the two things that have cracked me up in this conversation in the last 90 seconds about how far everything has moved in the last 15 years, and this is a huge positive for Ole Miss because you are you have this huge seat at the table, you have this $120 million budget, you have all these different things. 
an Alabama coach wanted to leave for Kansas. Kansas. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I think he absolutely intended to leave. I mean, a few years before Nutt flirted with Kansas. And yep. then the other one is it is not even fathomable now that an SEC team would go undefeated and not be ranked number one or number two in the country. Not even possible. Yeah. It's, it's impossible. Abs- impossible. And that team was really good. I mean, you, you go back and look at that. And now, team. I get that it was USC, Oklahoma, and, and, and Auburn, but still, I don't care. The SEC would be number one in that situation no matter what. Yeah, sir, absolutely. Un, un, undeniable. And uh, that Auburn team was really talented. I mean, they had Jason Campbell and Carnell Williams and, and Ronnie Brown and, and um, oh gosh, Marcus McNeil, um, Carlos Dansby. They were loaded. I mean, uh, 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 Carlos Rogers, the team, was, the team had the team had uh, talent all over the field. They they were if 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 it were today, absolutely, you're right. It's a great point. If 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 it were today, that they would have team, played USC for the national title. Yeah, and that team Auburn would have been number one, and and uh, and and would have been a media darling, no doubt. With all those all those players, that. And that Auburn USC game would have been one hell of a football game because USC I, just beat the crap out of Oklahoma, and then Auburn kind of sleptwalked past Tech. Yeah, they were not motivated to be there. I, I spent that whole week in New Orleans um, as a columnist, kind of looking for columns, and there was only one column. It was they don't really want to be here. Um, they, they they knew where they wanted to be, and they were they were bitter that they weren't there, and it was kind of difficult to blame them. When, when you look back on it, I remember at the time thinking, I don't blame them at all. And um, Virginia Tech was pretty motivated, and Auburn was not particularly motivated that week, and they still played and won the game. And I can remember the – I do actually remember the post game talking to some of those guys, and they were kind of sad. Like, this is not how this was supposed to end. This was supposed to end – in a different game where there would never be the what if, we would know, hey, we're either the best team or, or we're not. And they had, you know, they had a little something to prove with, with SC because they played them in 02 and 03. And they'd lost in LA in 02, and then they'd gotten popped in, uh, in 03 in a season opener. And they, they wanted, they wanted uh, another round with SC. And, and for two reasons one, they thought they could beat them. And two, they 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 felt like you know if they played them and didn't win, uh, it'd be easier to accept their fate. It'd be easier to go, you know what, we're a really good team, but we're not as good as them. They're the champs. Uh, bow to the crown. Uh, and 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 as it stood, they they finished that game. They won a Sugar Bowl and and all that stuff. And and they had kind of a an odd bitter taste in their mouth. It was a it was a I can remember kind of almost feeling as close as I ever came to feeling sorry for a team that I covered. Well, there, there's no more anticlimactic way to finish a season, either 13 and 0 or 14 and 0 or whatever they were. I mean, just, just impossible. But, yeah. Yeah. And I think it was, it was 13 and you know, they won the sec championship and, and, and that, that day it was all about how would the, how would the votes fall and all that stuff. And I was an AP voter and, I had Auburn number one, and I can remember some some of the co- – Eddie Grand in particular comes to mind. He came up to me at one point in New Orleans and just said, I appreciate you voting for us. And I said, well, I just kind of thought y'all were the best team and kind of left it at that. I didn't – it wasn't wasn't like agenda-based. It was just by the end of the year, they to me, they looked like the best team, and the league was pretty good, and and they ran through it. So, uh, Ole Miss UNA this morning. I'm getting Sean Robinson for a second. I'm just getting stuff out of the way before I uh, forget it. You'll get your basketball fix. Just hang in with us by this point. Uh, it's an RPI bomb of a game, so just win it. Move on with your day. UNA 5-21 five tw- five and 21 in their first year as a Division One program. 1-5 and five in the uh, Atlantic Sun. They beat Stetson. Uh, so, they're coming off a uh, coming off a big game Sunday. But, yeah, 5-21 and 21 with the uh, – with UNA today again, 11 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, for a football program, or not Ole Miss, just in general, a foot, any football program looking to uh, help out their their crowd and atmosphere and thing, just put 50,000 elementary school kids in there, hand them a Snickers and a Mountain Dew, and you'll be set for the day. It'll be done. Because this yeah. thing will be rocking around 11 o'clock this morning. 
Just give him a Mountain Dew and a Snickers, and you're all good. It'll be it'll be rocking. It'll be like a one one count, and uh, and and kids are going crazy, and cheering for both teams. It's lovely. It's it's fantastic. If you dropped a complete foreigner with no real understanding of anything about American sports culture <laughs> into that game this morning, he or she would walk away going, "They really love baseball." They, I mean, they love baseball. Oh, God. Carson going to be there, I assume? Yeah. Yep. He's going to be there. Um, he, uh. Did you tell him to take a glove? Well, uh, he didn't take a glove because he would lose the glove. I, I, I did tell him you, you do have to try to pay some degree of attention if you're sitting down one of the baselines. When, you know, if you're on the first base line, when a right hander is at the plate, you've got to pay attention and vice versa. He said, he said he would. I know he won't. I'll just hope for the best. <laughs> Do they stay for the whole game or what? What's the, what's the agenda? Uh, I don't think they stay for the whole game. I, I know that they take lunches and stuff. And so they're, they'll eat their lunch like at noon. They probably, my guess is around one o'clock. They walk, walk back one, one, one fifteen, one thirty. They walk back. Okay. But the day's shot. No, 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 no academic getting done today. Uh, he has he has math. Um, he has to go to math, and then I think he goes to science, and then he's 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 free for the day. Okay. Well, at least he's getting you know some of his 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 steel men and stuff. So that's a yeah yeah. yeah. A, well, he's he's pretty good at the math, and we've officially hit the point in math where uh, I either can't help. No joke. I either can't help. Or I have to Google it and give myself a lesson before I can help. Even at it, his age? Yeah, and he's taking like the most advanced math they offer. And he got the girls to help him the other day, and both of them struggled to help. And now we That's Cam a weird sign. Now Campbell took the easiest path possible to a high school degree. And that's our fault. Um Caroline has taken more advanced classes than Campbell did. And she, I think she was able to help him, but she had to kind of give herself a refresher, which. What is it? I, hell, I don't know. Stuff that. I mean, stuff are we that, talking algebra? Are we talking geometry? What is it? Uh, a little bit of all that stuff. They, I mean, I'm telling you, man, they're like, they're like doing some pre-calculus type stuff. I mean, and, and, and the teacher's fantastic. Um, his name is Jeff Jones. If you're out there and your kid is uh, in the Oxford system below the sixth grade and you have an opportunity to take Mr. Jones, you should. He's fantastic. He communicates well, uh, communicates incredibly well, almost daily with emails. I mean, we know what's going on in that class uh, pretty much every day. And, and there's been a couple of days where he sent, he sent a note one day, came back, it said, hey, just so all of you know, um, we introduced something and they really didn't get it today. And there was a quiz and there was a lot of really, really low scores. And, and those are being entered into power school. And, and some of your kids are, are afraid to come home. And some of your kids are convinced that they will, uh, they will, they will not make it through the night once you learn of their grades. So be aware. And it was like that kind of stuff. And, I mean, I was like thinking to myself, well, I'm not going to get mad because if, if Carson made a 40 on it, I'd have made a 10, maybe. I'd have gotten however many points you get for putting your name down. And I'm not scared of math the way that a lot of people are. I'm okay at math. Yeah, terrified. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm okay at it, but he's had some things with the multiple equations on both sides of the – basically both sides sides of the equal sign where I've had to I've had to Google and, and – and, give myself like 30 minute 45 minute primers to be able to help him do we have at least the deal where if you make it correct it's just correct or is there still a process that you have to prove the way it became correct oh you have to show your work you have to show how you got there you can't but, do just... you ha but can you do it your own way is my question um yeah well, we're kind of past that that was a that was an elementary school thing okay that, sure enough they told us all the common core stuff yeah, there was, and, and I can't remember the teacher, and she would not want me to say her name, so it's a good thing that I can't remember her exact name, but she told me, don't worry about it. Um, it's basically stupid, and he's not going to do it starting in about the sixth grade, so don't worry about it. 
and he's smart, so just don't sweat it. And so we didn't, and she was right, and and now he, it's good, it's all good. But yeah, they, in, in 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 Mr. Jones's class, he he does have to be able to show his work how he got to an answer. Okay, just curious. So prepare yourself, big boy. <sighs> it's 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 all it it, it changes. Um, Someone asked me a question about on the on the message board. I failed to answer it yesterday about Campbell and us being prepared for her leaving and all that stuff. And um, he was, I think, his daughter was seven. And I'll just say that it changes from seven to seventeen. The you know kids change, relationships change. I mean, you love your kid as much as you did when they were seven. You probably love them more, but but the relationships different. So prepare yourself. The, the the school works a the school works a different deal. Yeah. All right, we'll get into basketball in one second. First I'll tell you about Blow Dry Bar Oxford, 662-638-3310-1801 Jackson Avenue there in Oxford. It was voted best new business in town for 2018, 10 to 6, Tuesday to Friday. You get there before game time. You can still make the game today if you'd like. 10, 10 to 3 on Saturday. We've been telling you about that. It's not just for women. Men out there with uh, with hair, if you'd like a haircut, they'll take care of you. One of the better cuts in town and a good price to boot. You mentioned rumblegrove.com. They'll knock a little off there of your hair and the uh, and the price of the uh, the haircut. If you want to go in, you want to get that gift card for the uh, lady in your life or a lady listening to take care of yourself, mention Rumble Grove. They'll hook you up there as well with the Every Popular Blowout or many other options with Blow Dry Bar Oxford. Again, 662-638-3310. We, uh, we're going to start having a segment of the show every day that is sponsored by Blue Delta Jeans. Probably will be similar to the segment that we just had. I uh, don't want to, uh, Chase mentioned it earlier, don't want you to forget, we're really excited to invite you to join Blue Delta Jeans on the square in Oxford on Sunday, April the 28th to celebrate Blue Delta's five-year anniversary on the square. They've been around uh, since about 2011, but they've been on the square for five years uh, this month. So you get a chance to join them for uh, music, Bloody Marys, Big Bad Breakfast Biscuits, and Blue Jeans from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the square. Blue Delta Jeans will launch their spring-summer line of denim and Holland and Sherry and... uh, you get an opportunity to go in and either create your own design or you can take designs that have been created for Grammy Award winners such as uh, Jason Isbell, World Series champs, uh, Super Bowl winners, uh, NASCAR drivers, Oscar Award winners, Chase Parham, lots of people. Uh, you can, so you can pick your own or you can kind of go with something that's that's been done by somebody else. Uh, they'll be fit just for you and you can take both of our words on this. Um, once you put on a pair of Blue Delta jeans, two things. One, you're really not ever going to want to wear another pair of jeans. And two, you're going to start thinking about your second pair of Blue Delta jeans almost immediately. It's just how it works. But this event's a private event. Um, they're inviting all of our listeners to go. So all you have to do is you have to RSVP through direct message. So get on Instagram or Twitter or both and uh, send them a message. Um, tell them you're coming, give them your name, your phone number, whatnot, and uh, you'll get put on the big list so that uh, on, on the day when the security guards or whatever are out front, you get to be one of the cool kids. You give them your name, you're on the list, you get to come in and hang out with Blue Delta Jeans, Bloody Marys, Biscuits, Blue Jeans, hard to beat that. Yes, I uh, put a couple on the uh, on the list this morning, so it's uh, it's filling up. We've got people headed in, we got uh, taking care of it. Uh, podcast also brought to you by Community Mortgage, Oxford, Memphis, Siddle County, and Chattanooga. Underwriting and processing is done in Memphis. You're getting local underwriting and understands your market. A leader in condo financing and the float down option. So you can lock in the current rate. But if rates go down before you close, you get that lower rate. 662-234-2704 or J-L-O-W-E at communitymtg.com. If you're coming up this weekend for, uh, for the Grove Bowl, for baseball, for both, or you're coming back up uh, later this month for Double Decker for the uh, the Blue Delta Jeans party. While you're here, check out Savannah Square. It's a new nine-acre development, seven-tenths of a mile from the Oxford downtown square. It's conveniently located east of North Lamar, just a short stroll from the Midtown Shopping Center, which houses snack bar and Big Bad Breakfast and Jinsei and all that. It uh, will initially consist of 
32 standalone detached structures, individual homes, ranging in size from about 1,100 square feet to about 2,400 square feet. The model home is available for your inspection. It's located at 215 William Street. So if you're coming up, get in touch with Harry Alexander of REMAX Legacy Realty. Let him know you're on your way. He'll set you up a look at the model home. Uh, they've got different finishes and stuff that you can use to make it your own. Um, and check out this great new development while houses are still available. SavannahSquareOxford.com or get in touch with Harry. Call or text 662-801-5621. And we're brought to you by Oxford University Bank. OUB, locally owned and operated right here in Oxford. Uh, OUB right now has a commercial checking account. It's paying 1% interest as long as you keep $10,000 in the account. comes with fully interactive online banking. They'll set you up um, where you can deposit checks from your office, not have to worry about coming into the bank every day to deposit those checks. More than likely, any business owner at another bank is now paying a monthly fee for their account, and they are most assuredly not making 1% on their money. You will at OUB. So to learn more, check out liveoxfordbankoxford.com. Or call 662-234-6668. OUB is FDIC insured. So um, the news that finally came yesterday, I did not have the uh, the Annie soundtrack queued up this morning when we uh, when we started the uh, the podcast. But nonetheless, uh, e- even a little uh, even a little dr- drama last night too, to the point of I kind of appreciated it. I didn't have to cover it. I didn't have to really whatever. So it, I, I laughed about it. Sean Robinson, the uh, power forward from Gilbert, Arizona, commits to Ole Miss. Six foot ten, six foot eleven, a little over two hundred pounds. Plenty of room to uh, fill out. Class of twenty twenty. Uh, it was supposed to be coming for several days. He puts the video out in a tweet last night, then deletes the vi- the video in the tweet, then puts another one out that's longer. Um, pretty well done video, though. I-, I-, I will give him credit. That was one of the better commitment videos that I have seen. It was, and he wanted it to be right before he put it out. I Understandable. Don't, I don't think he completely grasped that uh, everyone generally knew it was coming or expected it to come and that they were hanging on every word. And sure enough, and I learned this lesson, I'll never do it again, never, ever. Even when a source tells me it's going to be at a certain time, I will never report that time ever again, never, ever. Um, that was my, my mistake. Um isn't that withholding information from your subscribers? It is, but it's also saving a lot of headaches. Okay. Because the, when you tell somebody, hey, it's 6.30, starting at 6.31, there is a segment that panics. There was no reason. And I, I don't know, we, we said it all along. There was no reason to panic. Everything was fine. He, he, he's a kid. Um, he, he is he, not aware that people were uh, really interested in where he was playing college basketball. No, no, not not at all. Just completely unaware. And so he puts the video up, and and then he went to dinner with his family, and um, just kind of oblivious. And I don't mean that in a negative way. Just oblivious to the fact that people are hanging on every word of it. He is a. Uh, I think he's an elite player. When you draw the kind of comparisons that he draws, and I'm not going to do the Kevin Durant thing to anybody because Kevin Durant is um, in many ways a once-in-a-generation scoring machine. To to compare a 17-year-old boy to Kevin Durant is, is absurd. Frankly, it's absurd to compare him to Brandon Ingram, but that's the comparison that his coach makes, and and I can see it. There's a lot of a lot of that long, um, lean, springy, athletic, um, can score close to the basket, obviously can score mid range and, and, and he can, he can shoot from the perimeter, um, pretty well. Um, I think his coach said he shot, you know, 40 to 50%. I kind of wanted to get numbers before I reported that in writing because those are the kind of things that can make you look silly later. Uh, so I said I didn't go there, but he can shoot the three. And um, that's the kind of player that Kermit Davis and every other coach in the country wants. You want guys who can uh, who can defend one through five, who can switch on anyone, and you want guys who can score uh, – from all three levels. For people who don't know what that means, that means close to the basket, mid-range, and and from three. 
um, it's rare. Those those are um, those are unicorns, kind of, you know. And he, he he's a, a late bloomer in terms of his of his vertical growth. He's really tall. He's may not be finished growing. Um, he's going to fill out eventually on that body, and and it'll a lot of it. People keep asking about his upside. You know, it's it's a lot of it just depends on how he fills out, how long it takes for him to grow into that body. I mean, right now, if he were to play in an SEC game, he'd get pushed around some because he's, he's you know, 6'11". I think his coach said 6'11", like 205 pounds. So he's got some time. He's not reclassifying. That's not on the table. He's going to play his senior year. So he's got time to grow. He's got time to fill out. Um, the, the, there's... I know the next thing is going to be about ratings and rankings. I don't know when Rivals redoes those. I'll, I'll send out some questions and ask. Um, he, he's playing in the EYBL in California, which means he's going to get loads of exposure. People are going to see him play against elite players. And so I anticipate a ratings bump. I won't be surprised if he skyrockets in the ratings. Um, he just hasn't been... He hasn't been evaluated in a rating cycle since some of this growth took place. Yeah, you can just look at his videos and see a lot of freakish talent there. So there's no doubt he's he's better than his current rating. And forget even what the rating is or whatever. His offer sheet, uh, quite impressive for a guy that has not run the full gamut of, of exposure, kind of like some other schools. I mean, I'll, I'll read through it here a little bit. Arizona, Arizona State, Florida, Florida State, Illinois, Kansas State, Marquette, Ole Miss. Uh, Oklahoma State, Syracuse, TCU, Texas A&M, Texas Tech, USC, Wisconsin, Xavier. I mean, we're not talking about we're not, we're not talking about chicken littles there. No, and that's when someone is someone said you know something about you know he's good, he's not going to get a ratings bump because he signed with Ole Miss. Look, I'll be critical of rivals. I, you've heard me be critical of rivals. I mean, sometimes I think some of rivals' recruiting ranking stuff is is flawed, but. They haven't signed basketball players with offer sheets like that. Not in the 11 years I've been covering the program. I mean, they just haven't. I mean, they've signed kids with offers, but not with that kind of an offer sheet. Not that I've seen. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm. I mean, I don't, I don't remember the offer sheets for Terrence Henry, Reginald Buckner, or some of those guys that were ranked in the top 100. Yeah, Reggie didn't have those kinds of offers. Terrence had a, a lot of offers. Um, and, Tariko, and he, maybe a little bit. Yeah, Tariko had, but like Tariko didn't have a Memphis offer. Yeah, that's right. I don't think Tariko had a Tennessee offer. I can't remember Reggie's. The closest one from an offer sheet standpoint that I can think of is Murphy Holloway. But Murphy, from a rating standpoint, and Murphy was a four star player, but from a rating standpoint, Murphy was a little bit hard to rate because. He was listed at 6'7", but he wasn't 6'7". His perimeter game was kind of shaky. His, his his game close to the basket was was elite, but he was short. 6'5", as a power forward, is short. And so it was hard to rate Murphy. Yeah, you're exactly right on Buckner. Um, Buckner's offer sheet was Ole Miss, Bradley, Georgia State, Middle Tennessee, Missouri, North Texas, UTEP, and Southeast Missouri. Yeah, totally different kind of a deal. And 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 Reggie was a kid that everyone knew defensively was an impactful player. But no one really knew whether his offensive game would, would, would develop. And it really didn't. And it wasn't for a lack of effort. He just he wasn't super skilled on the offensive side of the court. Defensively he was a great shot blocker, had a real understanding of of, um, of that, was a, a very good on ball defender. But Reggie's offensive game as a high school prospect was very limited. It was, it was if he caught it, he could dunk it, and that was about it. And and so it was hard to give him four or five stars. He certainly wasn't a kid who. And he was a four star. Yeah, I mean, I just that whole agenda against Ole Miss thing doesn't really. It, it just doesn't. It doesn't um, stand up under scrutiny at all. Reggie is probably, at least in the modern era, the highest ranked signee Ole Miss has ever had. He finished uh, number 29 nationally. And did not have an offer sheet to support that rating. Yeah. 
And I can't remember Tariko's offer sheet. Tar- Tariko was. I think Terrence probably had the better offer sheet. That's my guess. If you made me guess, Tariko was freakishly athletic, but no one really knew where he'd play. Was he a? He was kind of a tweener. Was he a one? Was he a point? Was he an off guard guy? Was what was he? Which was kind of the story of his college career when he and Chris Warren played together. As much as they should have been dominant. They never could figure out who should be on the point. Because in many ways, uh, Chris was a better two guard than he was a one guard, even though he had to play a lot of point at Ole Miss. Terrence Henry's offer sheet was Ole Miss, Arkansas, Kansas, LSU, and Miami. So pretty good. That might be the number one. I remember LSU wanted him badly. Yeah, I I recall that too. Because you would have been just getting started. That was 2008. Yeah, he was. He had already signed. The first basketball kid that I talked to when I started this job was Murphy Holloway. Really? Yeah. He had a uh, very circuitous career. <laughs> Murphy, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Murphy's Mur- Murphy's a great, great guy. He he's a uh, he's a character. I mean, not to get down that path again, but Murphy Holloway. Marshall Henderson, Reggie Buckner, Reggie Buckner on the, on the same team at the same time. Like you said, Nick Williams, just hanging out as a counselor, just trying to keep this puppy together. Well, and and Bill Armstrong kind of having to be good cop, bad cop because, um, Al Pinkins was on that staff. And I think there were a couple of days that Al Pinkins probably wanted to do physical harm to, uh, to Reginald Buckner. And uh, and I think there were a few days that Andy Kennedy just completely blew his blew his top, which is understandable, <laughs> um, you know. And and so there were there was a lot of Bill Armstrong had his that was a pretty talented staff too. It's, if you could do, I mean, and obviously hindsight now, whatever. But just looking back, you know, we, we get asked weird mailbag questions, weird fire away Friday questions. If you could pick. One John Feinstein Brink book to write, it would have been getting embedded with that team that year. Oh, God, yes. That was it. Oh, God, yes. Let's go day one to all the way to the LaSalle and the ball rimming out with that group. Oh, no question. You, it'd been... You'd have story after story after story. Oh, I think you'd have a bestseller. Yeah, no doubt. I, I really do. I've had people ask me if, if you could go back and write a book about one team. Which team would it be? No question, that one. Yeah. No doubt, because the characters. I mean, getting getting those stories now would be... Impossible, and nobody would care, because it's six, seven years later. But It would be, yeah. But that team, and man, how close they were to a, like, truly a Hollywood sort of finish. Literally. Literally. <laughs> I mean, that team was going to go to L.A., with a legitimate chance to win two games with that crew. Played Gonzaga in the Staples Center. Yeah, and keeping <laughs> – because you remember Marshall, after they beat Wisconsin, Marshall got kicked out of a bar. The NCAA, in Kansas City. <laughs> the NCAA came and kicked him out of the bar in Kansas City. They weren't, they weren't going to be Boy Scouts in L.A. I mean, they, they were going to go play. And they were going to go play. It was, man, they were so close to getting that done. It would have been, that would have been wild. The, the the list of possible outcomes in L.A. Good and bad. Oh, yeah. But they would have had a legitimate shot to get to. Wherever it was. Yeah, wherever the hell that Final Four was. San Antonio, I, mean, I don't know. They would have had a legitimate shot to get there, no doubt. So what's kind of next for Ole Miss? I mean, what, what, what's our timeline here? What are we kind of looking at from uh, other basketball recruiting? I mean, what, when is Kadeem Sy doing what he's doing? What's what's sort of coming up here in the next weeks, months, whatever? So the signing period starts two weeks from tomorrow. Um, if you wanted a clue, you, we got our first official clues yesterday. Um, if if Zach Naylor and Brian, Nail- Brian Halem's leaving the program was news to you, 
then I've just done a really bad job of writing it, or you haven't written anything that I've you haven't read anything that I've written. Dominic Owen Echek also in the transfer portal. Yeah, and, and and that's no surprise. No. Um, that is probably indicative. This is what I should have written yesterday. That is probably indicative of them keeping Carlos Curry. They weren't going to keep Curry, Howard, and Olenichik. They weren't going to keep all three guys. Um, so the fact that Dom is is out, and by the way, best of luck to him. Um, he's a great kid. Um, just an absolutely wonderful person. He's going to do really well in life. He's going to end up in Europe playing in Poland or Finland or someplace like that, and he's going to do well. It's not his fault that he wasn't athletic enough to excel in, at the SEC level. It wasn't for a lack of effort. You can ask people on the old staff, and you can ask people on the new staff, and they'll all tell you the exact same thing, that nobody worked harder. Nobody tried more, and nobody gave the, the, the program that he played for more than, than Dom did. But there's only so much you can do, and – when he got matched up against guys like Gafford and 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 the kid at Doolittle at Oklahoma, I just it, it was it was such an athletic mismatch that there was just nothing he could do. Um, so anyway, he's out too. Um, I haven't heard a decision on Luis Rodriguez. I haven't heard a decision on Franco Miller. I know they want to evaluate Franco. I know they'd like to keep Franco. They 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 would but they, they, they need him to be able to contribute next season. Um, to answer your question, we're going to know about Cy and Brakefield and Crowley. Um, now, Crowley, to my knowledge, has not been released from his uh, NLI, and I would guess that Vanderbilt's strategy there is they at least want the new coach, whether that's Jerry Stackhouse or uh, Johnny Dawkins or whoever it may end up being, they at least want the new coach to be able to have an opportunity to speak to Crowley before that decision's made. Um, so the answer to your question is it's going to depend on who they can get. Brakefield, as of last week, had not decided whether or not he was going to reclassify. Um, I think in the end, I anticipate that he will, and I anticipate he'll end up at Ole Miss. Um, Kadeem Sai is going to take some visits and he's a Juco kid and I love Ole Miss's chances. I really do, but it's recruiting stuff gets weird and stuff gets weird and stuff happens. So, um, the answer to your question is the people that want concrete dates and times. I can't give them that. And then there's the, there's the transfer portal, which is, uh, ongoing. Vol- it's, it's voluminous. And it's ongoing, and there are people that Ole Miss would take in the transfer portal if things fell through, and there are people that they wouldn't take if they got who they want to get. So, it, um, There are moving parts to this. Yeah, for whatever reason, people hate the word fluid, and I don't really know why because I think it's a really good word that often describes – I think it's because they fans like things to be black and white so-and-so is going to pick from these three schools on this day, and if he chooses this, it means this. It's just not like that. It, it, it is fluid. The whole, the whole deal is fluid. It's, it's going to be a a very eventful 15 to 21 days. And, and we'll start learning more after that. We'll come back to uh, the podcast in one second. Before we do that, I'll tell you about Mastercuts Lawn and Landscape, mastercutslawn.com, 662-607-607. 7773. You know about all the basic maintenance they'll do. You know about all the different ways they can help you out, but you know that they also offer a lot more. Mastercuts will build your custom playgrounds, retaining walls, pool decks, and outdoor living spaces with paper patios starting at just $3,000 and forestry mulching starting at just $100 per hour. The path to your dream backyard easier than you think. So go online to gomastercuts.com for a free quote, or you get that same free quote by giving them a call again at 662 607 Seven 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 three or go mastercuts.com. The uh, podcast is also brought to you by Grenada Nissan. If you're in the market for a Nissan vehicle, Grenada Nissan is the place to go. They've got a complete selection of new and previously owned Nissan vehicles. Uh, great lease deals as well. Get in touch with Gene and Sandy there at Grenada Nissan. It's a it's a busy week there. 
Uh, their daughter's getting married on Saturday. They're having the reception there at Grenada Nissan. So it might be a really busy week, but that might be an opportunity to uh, catch them off the game a little bit, get an even better deal at Grenada Nissan than you normally would. I can tell you this, you get great service after the sale. Uh, they're great people. They'll take care of you. You'll matter to them. Um, I've been a customer of theirs for 11 years, and uh, they're wonderful people. They'll take care of you, too. It's GrenadaNissanUSA.com. Podcast also brought to you by John Edwards, Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. If you've been thinking about that golf trip with the guys, anniversary trip, uh, you're trying to do something special, maybe you're going to Florida, the Caribbean, Napa, whatever it may be, get in touch with John Edwards. He's part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of travel partners that allows John to supply his clients with added values and unique benefits that are simply not available to other travelers. He traveled the globe for 37 years before getting into the travel business. He knows the extra attention that's needed to make a special trip, one that creates a lifetime of unique memories. You don't have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services. All you have to do is give him a call or send him an email Give him some parameters, give him a budget, and he'll give you options that you won't find on your own. So call John at 901-494-3387 or send him an email, jedwards at regencytravel.net. First-time clients can save $50 off their first booked trip just by telling John you heard about Regency Travel on the podcast. I'll be working on my mailbag today. My mailbag is sponsored by the Weston Jackson Stop by the Weston Jackson. If you uh, live in or around the Jackson area, stop by uh, Soul Spa. It's the ultimate luxury spa experience in downtown Jackson. Also stop by Estelle Wine Bar and Bistro. They've got a plate lunch every day. They've got uh, creative craft cocktails, a curated wine list. It's open for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and Sunday brunch. Chef Caden does a terrific job. It's a great uh, place to hang out. And if you're staying in, if you're staying in Jackson, uh, on your travel for business or uh, passing through on your way, maybe up to Oxford, whatever the case may be, there's no better place to stay than the Weston Jackson. You can uh, redeem and uh, gain Marriott rewards points by staying at the Weston Jackson. Podcast is brought to you by scriptedjewelry.com. Go to the website, see all the different ways they can help you out with holidays coming up, Mother's Day specifically. You can get great turnaround times and know that you have time to get your order in for Mother's Day. Their order deadline for that until April 25th. So it's a mom thing. Head on over to scriptedjewelry.com. See all the recent work. See their new arrivals. See their popular options as well. Anything you need from Scripted Jewelry to put your special message on that special item for someone in your life. Again, everything from frequently asked questions to sizing guides and more. Scriptedjewelry.com. So... Jerry Stackhouse, uh, a report says he's in negotiations to be the next Vanderbilt head coach. He's currently an assistant with the Memphis Grizzlies. I think he did some stuff with the Raptors a little while. He's been an analyst on television. What's sort of the general thought there if that is the direction the Commodores go? It's an interesting pick. Um, you know, he's, he's it, with the Grizzlies right now, um, obviously has a, a lot of, of former NBA connotations there i mean he played in the league for forever um was a very good player um he's been in the league it's it's, it's an interesting choice um it feels more dangerous than penny well yeah because look penny's deal is penny was such an institution in memphis and Penny was coaching high school ball and AAU ball in Memphis. They got Penny because they believed, and it looks like they're accurate, that Penny could do two things. One, galvanize a fan base. He's done that. And recruit. And recruit these particular kids. Yeah. Which happened to include the nation's best player in James Wiseman. I mean, none of those things were coincidence. <laughs> And, and and it's worked. It's absolutely worked. Um, at least from a galvanizing the fans, they sold a lot of tickets, which is a Im- important thing to do. And they sold a bunch of tickets, and and they've gotten Wiseman and 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 uh, the kid Jeffries, and um, you know they're they're they're, they're in, uh, moral and they're in all these kids, I and mean, it's, it's a really good class, and and they'll be a very very talented team uh, next season. But Stackhouse, I don't, and maybe I'm missing something. And if I am, 
please feel free to say, Neil, you're an idiot. I don't know that he's got those sort of connections in Nashville. Well, I don't really think so, but I don't think Vanderbilt ever says, hey, we have to dominate Nashville. I mean, I think for whatever reason, they see themselves as a national recruiting base because of, I don't know if it's the education, I don't know if it's past history or what. It just doesn't seem like the local angle is really a big deal to Vanderbilt. To me. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out kind of how he – it's got a certain Avery Johnson feel to it. I mean, he's a name, but he's not a name. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a he, dude, but – well, look, these college kids don't know who Jerry Stackhouse is. Yeah, he's been out of the league since 2013. Oh, uh, yeah. So the last time he played in the NBA, the kids that he's recruiting now were 11. Yeah. His Stop. coaching career was he was an assistant with the Raptors in 15 and 16, and then he spent three years coaching the Raptors G League team, and then he's been with the Grizzlies for a year or two. Yeah. He's well thought of. I mean, he's he's a very smart – I remember him being a smart player. Uh, he, he's uh, – it's just – it's a risky deal in this league, man. You're you're walking into a snake pit, honestly. Um, really good coaches. And Buzz Williams is, is absolutely taking the A&M job. Um, yeah, I don't know. Feels – it feels risky. Um, really does. It feels feels crazy. I, I've I've heard people, the the hottest of hot takes. This is the dumbest of the dumb hot takes. Is the the Vanderbilt fan that said, "Well, I'm I'm concerned that if he comes to Vanderbilt, he'll he'll be the next guy at North Carolina. If Jerry Stackhouse <laughs> is the next guy at Carolina, he tore it up at Vanderbilt, and you will throw him a parade on his way to Chapel Hill." Yeah, you'll pack his bags and you'll go, thank you, Mr. Dackhouse. Let's go find the next one. Thank you. You will literally put him on a throne and get one of those things where you attach it to the shoulder and you'll walk him. Carolina has a few former players with some high-profile uh, ability to them. So, yeah, I don't think it's some guarantee that Jerry Stackhouse is replacing uh, Roy Williams. You don't think there might be a handful of coaches who would be interested in the North Carolina job? A couple who would walk on broken glass. Yeah, so I... If Jerry Stackhouse gets that gig, he he lit Vanderbilt on fire, boys and girls. It, it'd be all right. The two interesting parts of uh, Jerry Stackhouse's Wikipedia page to me is he has performed the national anthem before Mavericks home games. Okay. Uh, there's that. I did not know he was a singer. Apparently he is. Um, although, although formerly a pescatarian, he now is back to eating meat, by the way. What is a pescatarian? Uh, it is the practice of following a diet that includes fish and other seafood, but not the flesh of other animals. Ah. So no red meat for sure for Mr. Stackhouse there for a little while. But he's he, back to eating red meat? Yeah, you you would not be a very good pescatarian. I like fish. You like beef, too. I do like beef. I like chicken. Well, that's not allowed either. Yeah. It's fish and seafood. That's it. The The, the meat that I could give up, Without a whole lot of uh, concern, I could, I could give up pork. Not a big deal. Yeah, I mean, I like it fine, but like, if you told me I could never have pork again, okay. You know, we always do those. What if we told you? But what are we getting on the other end? I mean, why are we just giving up something? It, yeah, I'd want something in return. I mean, I like bacon. As well as the next guy. Yeah, I mean, I love bacon. But I mean, if you told me I could never have bacon again, assuming I mean, I, I, I mean I'm good with like the low class charcuterie sausage and cheese plate. I'm all good. Yeah, but you don't wake up in the morning going, "I, I gotta have pork." No, I don't. You never like crave pork tenderloin. <laughs> no, um, and like my kids hate it. Laura loves pork tenderloin, and so and for I whatever, like it. It's good. Had it yesterday. I, I like it fine. I'm that way about salmon. That's my one thing. Like, I never, ever think, you know what I'd like today is salmon. And then when I have salmon, I generally like it. It's it, it's it's my sort of fail safe if I trust the restaurant where I'll look for something I really want. If I don't find anything, I'll go, hey, the salmon will be fine. I'll eat the salmon. I like the wild salmon more than the other salmon, which makes me weird, I think. 
but I do I do prefer the wild wild caught over the farm race. Mm. Uh, free free plug here. And if you'd like it, if not, be free pull to give us a call. But I did go to that Soulfish last week, and I mean, look, it might be frozen off ten trucks. I don't know, but the uh, they had a smoked uh, ruby red trout that was really really good. Oh yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was good. I, I think it was I a mean, big I'm... fillet. It was good. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I like trout a lot. I like fish. Yeah. Like redfish and, and uh, I just generally like fish. Redfish, blue tuna. fish, one fish, two I fish. Love, I love tuna. Tuna's awesome. Uh, the other part of that is in 2017, Stackhouse completed the Harvard Business School Executive Education Program on Business of Entertainment, Media, and Sports. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. He like was, I said, he's... He's highly thought of. He's he's considered a very smart guy. He's he's a, a very good communicator. He just doesn't have a lot of college coaching experience. Really, he doesn't have any college coaching experience. He was the Sports Illustrated Player of the Year in 1995, and he uh, he did pass the milestone of scoring 15,000 career points. Here's a uh, here's a trivia question for you. Okay. What number was he when he crossed the 15,000 career point threshold? Meaning, how many people had done it when he did it? Ooh. 15,000 career points. You're like, it's, it, it, and I'll, I'll help you here. It's a relatively large number, so I'm not like asking you to name players or anything. Just how many do you think have done it? 15,000 career points. In the NBA. That is correct, yes. Uh, 100. He was the 106th. Uh, your fun fact is he scored 15,000 career points one game after teammate Dirk Nowitzki scored 15,000 career points. Wow. They did it on back-to-back nights. I wonder how many, how many points does Dirk have now? Um, I could probably tell you if you'd like me to try. It doesn't matter. I'm guessing he's well over 15,000. While I'm doing that, why don't you tell me about something? Okay. I will, uh, let's see, who should I tell you about? I will tell you about Pinnacle Trust. Pinnacle Trust is uh, based in Madison, Mississippi. Has more than, it has clients in, in more than 20 states. Has advisors in, in three states. Uh, Pinnacle Trust, what they do is they provide detailed, specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and much more. At Pinnacle Trust, investing is treated like a commodity. Decisions are made using objective information and research, not emotions. So regardless of your level of wealth, Pinnacle Trust will sit down with you, listen to your goals, study your expenses, and put forth a comprehensive, detailed financial and retirement plan. Cookie-cutter financial planners put you in a box. Pinnacle Trust builds a box just for you. To learn more about Pinnacle Trust, go to pintrust.com. That's P-I-N-N trust.com. Mention you heard about Pinnacle Trust on the podcast. You'll get 10% off your first year's fee. I'll tell you that guests will join us uh, on the Patterson and Earhart hotline. Patterson and Earhart, attorneys at law, specialize in personal injury law and real estate law. But they have a general practice that can handle any of your legal needs. If you think you have a, um, a legal need, you think you have a, 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 maybe a case, maybe you just have some legal questions, give them a call. Uh, John Calvin Patterson, Wes Earhart, they're Ole Miss guys, they're local guys, and most importantly, they're really smart lawyers who will get back with you within the same day guaranteed, and they'll shoot you straight. They'll let you know whether you have a case, whether you don't have a case, whether you have a case that is worth pursuing or not, and that if, that initial consultation, that phone call, it's free. You get peace of mind for free, and then you can decide from that point whether you need to move forward with uh, – your, your legal situation, 662-526-1992, or check out their site, pelaws.com. Podcast is brought to you by GNM Pharmacy in Oxford. They deliver local in the Oxford area to your home or workplace. They offer MedSync to make sure you're taking the medicine you need at the appropriate time. There's no waste there. They get it to you, the amount you need, when you need it. They're also offering a pharmaceutical-grade CBD oil. You know by now that it's offered in sublingual oil, soft gel capsules, or topical solves. It's an all-natural product. helps maintain overall health and regulate many conditions such as depression, anxiety, pain, insomnia, and more. It's FDA approved. It is legal in all 50 states. There's no crazy, crazy side effects or anything like that. So give them a call to find out more. 662-236-2222. And you can transfer your medications 
while you are on the phone to a pharmacy you can trust. Uh, all right, so Dirk Nowitzki, as of right now, assuming that it updates every day, he has 31,487 points. That is sixth all time. Say that again. 31,487, which wow. is sixth all time. Wow. So he's behind Kareem. Kareem is number Carl, one. He's behind Kareem, Carl Malone. Who's number two? Uh, LeBron James. Number four. Michael Jordan. Number five. And um, Wilt. Number six. Who's number no, sorry, number seven. Who's number three? Hmm. I'll give you the rest of the top ten. Number eight, Julius Irving. Number nine, Moses Malone. Number ten, Shaquille O'Neal. Pretty good players. Uh, Jerry West? Jerry West is uh, number 26. Oh, wow. Who's number three? You're going to hate yourself. Larry Bird. That is incorrect. Larry Bird is... I'm not even seeing him on the list. Number 39. No joke. Yeah. Uh, I know. I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to be so angry at myself. Because it's like in, in, it brutally obvious, it I'm is. sure. Magic? That is incorrect. Magic Johnson is... Uh, let's see. Magic Johnson is even below uh, Joe Johnson. He's not even the top Johnson. Oh, wow. He, uh, actually, Eddie Johnson's even next. Magic so Johnson is 82. Having a Johnson measuring contest, Magic doesn't do as well as you'd think. Not so much. <laughs> Russell Westbrook is 66th. Yeah. He recently passed Zach Randolph, if you are curious. Yeah. James Harden flying up the charts at 69 currently. <laughs> Getting 60 a night will move you up quick. Yeah. I don't know. I'm 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 I'm, just, I'm prepared to hate myself even more. Um, played for the L.A. Lakers. His name Elgin is Kobe Bryant. Oh my God! <laughs> uh, LeBron I'm will catch him here pretty soon. He's he's within about eleven hundred. My self loathing is out of control at this moment. That is unbelievable. Pretty mad at yourself right now, aren't you? Yeah. I loved watching Kobe play. Really entertaining guys in the 11 to 20 category. I know you're shocked, but Hakeem, Oscar Robertson, Dominique, uh, Tim Duncan, Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, John Havlicek, and uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Carmelo's 22, Vince Carter's 23. Tim Duncan is so sneaky underrated. Like, Tim Duncan sort of flies under the radar, and then you look at his stats and you go, whoa. Rick Barry and uh, Reggie Miller tied. They have the exact same amount of points for their career. They're two pretty good players. Yeah. Reggie could fill it up. Dwayne Wade, 35. Kevin Durant, 36. I was going to ask where Durant. Where's Steph Curry right now? Um, let's see. Curry. 114. Oh. Huh. He is passing uh, Randy Smith next. He just passed Jawan Howard. So, got a long way up for uh, Mr. Curry. Got time. Chris Paul, 87. Yeah, he's had a hell of a career. He's passing Jason Kidd here, like, now. And Jason Kidd had a hell of a career. Yeah. He'll get to Magic here pretty soon. They're within a 1,000 of each other. So, anyway, there's that. LaMarcus Aldridge and James Harden are separated by 35 career points. I like Harden's... Uh... I like Harden's chances to to, to uh, ultimately finish with more than L.A. Think so? Yeah. Okay. Just throwing it out there. Uh, all right. Oh, did you see this? Uh, one good one. Look, I, I I know there's a logical reason for it. I I, I get that it's uh it's basically April first, second, whatever it is. I, I I understand all that. Yeah. No better way to lose a clubhouse, however, for a terrible team than the uh, rookie manager of the Orioles last night pulling his pitcher. With a no hitter, with one out in the seventh inning and only at eighty two pitches. Ooh, did you see this? No. Yeah, Baltimore right-hander David Hess had thrown just eighty two pitches and was eight outs from a possible no hitter with a six nothing lead. 
in Toronto on Monday night when something incredible happened. Rookie manager Brandon Hyde came out and pulled him from the game. You can see Hess laughing when he walks out, thinking it's an April Fool's joke, but no April Fool's joke. The uh, the 25-year-old was yanked from the game, a game that the Orioles had to hold on and win 6-5. to five. Ooh. You can't do that on a team that's going to lose 100 games anyway. And you're a rookie manager in your first week? Yeah, Brandon Hyde was on Joe Madden's staff in Chicago for years. Um, that's not good. No, that's 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 going to be difficult to overcome. Unless the only way you could do something like that is if you had told the kid before the start, "Hey, look, the front office told me that when you get to eighty, that's it. Period." But no, you. I mean. Look, there's no doubt he, there was fatigue. I'm sure he saw velocity dips, but oh, got to let him give up a hit, don't you? Yeah, you do. And then you go get him. Yeah, immediately. Sure, whatever. The uh, the reliever promptly came in, gave up something, and a two run homer, and they ended up winning six to five. Oof. Yeah. Not a good move for the rook. No, and something tells me that wasn't his necessarily his call, but you, you, you got to stand up to the front office at that point and go, guys, I can't lose. This season is what it is. Stop. It's, it's April 1st. I can't lose the fellas. It's going to be a long summer. Yeah. Let's let him go. We'll pat him on the tail when he gives up a hit, and we'll move on with our day. Absolutely. So. And maybe even kind of hope that he goes ahead and gives up a hit. Yeah, of course. Whatever. Uh, all right, last thing here. If you want to bet on this weekend's Final Four games, your lines for the week, I'll let you take a shot at them. Virginia and Auburn. What's the line, Neil? Um, I'm going to guess Virginia's clearly the favorite. I will say that Virginia is a five-and-a-half point favorite. I have no idea. Um, The line is five-and-a-half. Wow. Yes. Virginia minus five-and-a-half against Auburn. Wow. <laughs> uh, Texas Tech, Michigan State. See if you can make it perfect. What do you think? Tech and Michigan State. Um, I'm going to guess Michigan State's the favorite, but it's close. I'm going to say Michigan State's a two-and-a-half point favorite. You are really, really good. You only missed it by a half point. Michigan State by three. Wow. Yeah, and State by three. I like... I think I like no it's such oh, five and a half is a ton the way Virginia slows down games. It's also a ton the way Auburn's playing right now. I mean Auburn literally believes they would beat the NBA All Star team right now. They're playing with such confidence and 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 spirit and. I really like Tech in that game, but I do too. I I, I think Virginia wins, but I'm terrified to lay five and a half points. And I love getting Texas Tech and points. The uh, computer simulation on Odd Shark for Tech and Michigan State, 68.6 to 68.6. <laughs> yeah. That'd be historical. It would. They are saying uh, Virginia 72, Auburn 68. Yeah, see, five and a half points is a lot of points in that game. And you know Auburn's going to just – because they can bomb threes, too. I mean, Harper and Brown and... I mean, it feels like Cinderella takes off the slipper at this point. But Do you worry about the jump, jump shooting team in the arena? Sure. Okay. And Virginia can really defend you. Over under 131 in the Auburn game. So 65-ish. Uh, I'd probably go under, but... Man, teams can just get hot and start scoring points. I'd probably go under. What's the over-under on Texas Tech, Michigan State? It's probably a little higher than that. Yeah, hold on, I'll tell you. I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's like 141. No, 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 132 and a half. Ooh. Yeah, well, they both really defend. Um, it's like a common thread there. <laughs> Even Auburn. Auburn really defends well in some of the full-court stuff. Michigan State is fairly sneaky from three, hitting about 39% on the year. So, 
Anyway, all right. Uh, baseball today. We'll have coverage of that at rebelgrove.com. Go ahead. Leading up to that, the 2019 Nissan Grove Bowl weekend, it has arrived. Join Ole Miss Athletics for the following events. On Friday, they play baseball against Florida at 6.30 p.m. On Saturday, the Nissan Grove Bowl at Vaught-Hemingway is at 3. Baseball is at home that evening against, as you might guess, Florida at 7. And then on Sunday, the men's tennis team plays Arkansas Pine Bluff at 1. And baseball wraps up the three-game series at home against the Gators at 1.30 p.m. We'll have coverage on baseball today. There's recruiting on the site this morning. Obviously, the uh, Sean Robinson stuff. He'd like to get on and uh, discuss that at Rebel Grove. And we'll talk to you again tomorrow.